You are the boss of your brain. The point of this video is to teach you about how pain works so you can learn how to have more control over your brain, your body, and your experience. Pain? What? Ugh. Pain is seriously my least favorite thing to think about. <sighs> okay, fine. <clears throat> the first thing to know is that pain is actually created in your brain. Most people don't know that, but it's true. Your brain is the world's most amazing computer. It is constantly monitoring and making sense of all the things your body is doing and feeling. Imagine you're a caveman. You're just minding your own business when all of a sudden a dinosaur comes out of nowhere and bites you on the leg. When something harmful and dangerous happens to you, your body sends a warning signal to your brain that something is wrong so you can do something about it. You experience this signal as pain. Pain is your body's alarm system telling your brain to pay attention. Wow. Huh. You know, I never thought of it this way before, but pain is actually really helpful. Oh. <clears throat> the warning signal of pain lets you know that something might be wrong with your body and helps you get out of danger as fast as possible if you need to. When a dinosaur tries to eat you, pain is very useful. But your body also sometimes gets confused and sends a pain signal to your brain when you're not in danger. Pain signals can even happen when something is actually helping your body. Like when you're at the doctor getting medicine with a needle or when you have a blood test. We might not always like them, but we need these things sometimes to help us. What happens is your body sends a signal to the brain. Hey, we may be in danger down here. Warning, something might be wrong down here. Warning. Sometimes your body can also get confused and send a warning signal when something is uncomfortable or even just a new sensation or feeling. So while the pain warning system is helpful if you are in danger, it is definitely not helpful during something like a blood test or anything else where there is no danger. The great news? You can learn to take control of that system and tell your brain and your body that you are safe and don't need that signal because you are the boss of your brain and your brain is the boss of your body. Yes, you can learn to change what your brain and your body do with the pain signal. When you know your body is safe and okay, you don't need any warning signals. You can turn down the feeling of pain with surprisingly little effort and make yourself feel a lot more comfortable and a lot more in control. Your brain works like a powerful computer, and you can learn to take control of this computer to make it do what you want it to do. Here's how it works. This is the pain signal coming to your brain. When you don't do anything and just focus on the sensation, the brain receives the signal at full strength. You feel 100% of that sensation. But there are at least five skills you can learn to change that signal. With these five skills, you can change the pain signaling system in your body and in your brain so that you are more comfortable the next time you need to have a medical procedure. Skill number one, distract yourself. We've all had the experience of being so focused watching a movie or playing a game that we didn't hear someone calling our name. Your ear still takes in the sound of that person calling your name, and your ear still tries to send the signal to the brain. But your brain is so distracted with paying attention to what you want to pay attention to that it just completely ignores the signal from your ear. Your smart brain knows that signal isn't important to you right now, so it just tunes it out. Distraction works the same way with a pain signal. Have you ever noticed a bruise on your knee at the end of the day but didn't know where it came from? You try to think back to your fun day playing sports or just being active with your friends, and you realize you didn't feel any pain, even though you must have bumped your knee pretty hard at some point. You didn't feel the pain because your brain was so focused on playing and having fun, and your brain knew you didn't need that warning signal. 
When you're about to get a needle, you can distract yourself on purpose to be more in control. You can choose to distract your brain away from the pain signal by watching a video you like or using a distraction card so that it is easier not to be bothered. When you focus your attention away from the pain signal, it is making the pain smaller in your brain. You are turning down the pain and maybe even turning it way, way down. It's pretty powerful to know that whatever we pay attention to gets bigger and what we don't pay attention to gets smaller. Skill number two, use your imagination. While you already know how to disappear into your incredible imagination by daydreaming when you're bored or just wanna be somewhere else, what you might not know yet is that you can also daydream on purpose so that it is easier not to be bothered by an uncomfortable feeling. Using your imagination fills your brain with the sights, sounds, and feelings of another place in time. Then it's easy and natural to let go of anything that bothers you. You can imagine yourself experiencing something that makes you feel good, and being in that other place in your mind makes you much more comfortable. Ooh, I like this one. For me, I would imagine diving in a submarine at the bottom of the ocean looking for sharks. Yes! You can let your eyes close or leave them open if you'd like, but just let your imagination transport you. When you tell your brain to imagine yourself somewhere else, your brain really goes there. And when you do, you are changing that whole brain computer and turning down the pain once again and helping yourself feel so much more comfortable. Skill number three, breathe from your belly. Taking deep breaths in and out can help keep you calm and relaxed. Deep breathing literally changes the way your body is working. It is helpful to breathe all the way down to your belly. Let's try it now. Deep breath in and Big breath out. That big out breath spreads comfort all over your body. Deep breath in, all the way down to your belly, and big breath out. Good. Sometimes it can be helpful to have someone else breathe slowly with you. Or, to make deep breathing fun, you can also do something like blow bubbles. Breathing from your belly changes the way your brain and your whole body are working. You begin to feel calmer and more relaxed as you take those deep, deep breaths, and that relaxation spreads through your body. Any pain signals naturally and easily get quieter and quieter until you might not notice them at all. Breathing? Is it just me, or are many of these skills things I already know how to do? I just need to do them on purpose. Nice! Skill number four, block the signal. You can also stop pain signals before they even reach your brain. You can do this a couple of ways. One way to block the signal is to have your doctor or nurse put numbing medicine on your skin. This can be a cream or spray or a patch. Be sure to ask your doctor or nurse what choices of medications are available and make a plan ahead of time so your medical team can make sure everything is ready. It is very important to give the medicine enough time to make your skin go numb. The medicine works to turn way down any feelings or sensations coming from that little patch of skin, so no signals even start their journey to the brain, or maybe just tiny signals. Another way to block the signal is to create other signals in your body so that your brain gets those signals instead of just the pain signal. You can do this with something that gives you a vibration feeling on your skin. You place it as close as possible to where your brain signal may start and between that place and your brain. For example, on your skin just above where you will be getting a needle poke. The vibration on your skin sends a vibration signal to your brain 
And because the vibration signal is between your brain and the possible pain signal, the pain signal gets blocked. You can show yourself how well this works ahead of time by seeing how different it feels to even touch your skin with the vibration on. Pretty handy! You can also do the same thing by using something that is very cold or by pressing or rubbing on your skin. Skill number five. Remember you are awesome. Remind yourself that you are brave and you are strong. Just thinking about all the things you are good at doing or remembering when you've done a great job handling something hard in the past can help you manage a new situation. It's like a movie flashback from your own personal memory bank. You're letting your brain know that things are gonna be okay. You know that you don't need the warning signal, so you can just let it go. And here's a bonus skill. This one's for the grown-ups. Keep calm. You can catch stress from other people just like you can catch a cold. So when adults are stressed, it can make kids feel worse. But you can also catch the feeling of calm. When adults stay calm and relaxed when kids are getting a procedure, it's much easier for everyone to stay calm and relaxed. Even better, kids should tell adults what they would like the adults to do during the procedure to help. For example, Kids might tell adults to stay quiet or hold up a video or tell a funny story or just hold their hand, stuff like that. And that's it. You now know six great skills to make yourself more comfortable the next time you need a medical procedure. Because you know yourself best, you get to decide which of these skills you want to use. Just like any new skill, you get better and better at it each time you do it. It is important to make a plan and write it down so you remember it and share it with your nurse or doctor. They need to know how to best help you be more comfortable and more in control of your body, and you are the best person to tell them that. After all, we know that you are the boss of your brain and your body. Wow, those really are six great skills. I don't know about you, but personally, this makes me feel a whole lot better. I'm going to go make a list right now for the next time I go to the doctor.